In 1945, the first nuclear device was detonated in New Mexico's Hornada del Muerto Desert. And north of the test site in the city of Albuquerque is an institution dedicated to this explosive history, the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. The collection includes a replica of the first atomic bomb to be tested, nicknamed Gadget, a nuclear weapon that could be launched from a jet fighter, and an intercontinental ballistic missile dating back to 1958, known as Thor. But among these powerful devices is one that looks deceptively simple. The artifact is shaped like a toaster. It's about 10 inches tall and 10 inches wide. There are toggles and indicator lights. There's no way of knowing exactly what it's for. This small box played a key role in a spine-chilling atomic accident that played out in the skies above the United States. The artifact is tied to a mid-air disaster that nearly led to nuclear devastation. It's the early 1960s. The world's two greatest superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, are locked in a titanic struggle for global supremacy, with each side seeking to amass more nuclear weapons than the other. Tensions are so high that the US Air Force keeps almost 30% of its long-range nuclear bombers airborne and ready to strike at all times. On January 23rd, 1961, one of those bombers, a B-52 Stratofortress, takes off from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in Goldsboro, North Carolina. On board are eight crew members and two MK-39 thermonuclear bombs. Each bomb had about 260 times the firepower of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. In command of the flight is Major Walter Tullock. Tullock was an ace pilot. He knew how to handle his aircraft and his crew. He was very well respected. Tullock's orders are to remain on standby while circling over the Atlantic. For the first 12 hours of the mission, everything goes smoothly. But then, while the bomber is over the coast of North Carolina, the pilot notices that there is a tear in the plane's right wing and that jet fuel is leaking out. Tullock immediately radios Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. They advised that he come back to base. They would take care of this mechanical repair. So the commander turns the plane around and begins to descend towards the airfield. But just as the craft reaches 10,000 feet, the unthinkable happens. A massive explosion blows the right wing completely off. It was pure chaos. This was a pilot's worst nightmare. The plane plummets towards the ground. If the aircraft's two bombs detonate, the results will be catastrophic. Anyone within a 20-mile radius would be instantly and dramatically killed. This was going to be the deadliest accident in American history. Major Walter Tullock and his crew have no choice but to bail out. Moments later, the nuclear-armed aircraft slams into a tobacco field. As he descends in his parachute, Tullock fears the worst. Tullock squeezed his eyes shut. He waited, he waited, and then he realized that nothing happened. Miraculously, the bombs did not go off. Tullock and four members of the crew land safely. Tragically, three of the airmen do not survive. Hours later, Air Force investigators find one of the bombs lodged in the ground, having failed to explode. They find the second weapon stuck in a tree, dangling from its parachute. So why didn't these bombs explode? The answer lies in a six-step arming sequence that acted as a fail-safe on each weapon. For the one that landed in the ground, 
the sequence had not been initiated. But for the device found hanging in the tree, it was a very different story. In fact, this bomb had come perilously close to going off. Of the six steps needed for detonation, five had been achieved. All that prevented the bomb from detonating was one simple hand-controlled on-off switch. It was literally one step away from nuclear catastrophe. In the aftermath, the U.S. military revises the arming mechanisms for the weapons in its nuclear arsenal. Instead of using simple switches, they create a system that requires a complex series of digital codes. It's called the Permissive Action Link, or PAL. It was made to be only armed by an authorized user. This essentially ushered in the era of the nuclear codes that we know and have today. Today, one of the very first permissive action link devices is on display at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It recalls the terrifying accident that left the United States one switch away from nuclear annihilation. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널, Discovery.